What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple user login and registration form using C++ in Microsoft Visual Studio. So this project is pretty simple, but pretty cool. And it has a lot of real world application because a lot of programs and projects that you're gonna be building are gonna have login applications where you want to store user data um, and you also wanna be able to call that back in the future. So the basic way we're gonna write this project, the way it shakes out, is we're gonna create the overall project structure um, to essentially prompt the user to make a decision whether they want to register or whether they want to log in as an existing user. And if they decide they wanna register, we'll just prompt them for a username and a password and then we'll store it to a text file. Um, but if they want to enter, if they want to log in an already registered user, then uh, we'll still prompt them for a username and password, but then we'll check for a text file with that set of information in our project. And if there is one, we'll just prompt successful login. And if there isn't, we'll say login failed and we'll prompt them to do it again. So those are the basic steps of the project. It's not gonna take very long and it's gonna use a lot of the concepts that we've already covered in C++. So if anything in this video feels like it's going too fast for you, feel free to ask the questions uh, that you have in the comments on this video or go back and check out my C++ tutorials playlist on the channel and it should fill you in on anything you're confused about in this video. But without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly set up the project to include some things that we've already seen. Um, and we're gonna include the package IO stream, and we're going to include two others. We're gonna include the package F stream, which um, IO stream, I should say, and F stream are basically to handle um, the like movement of uh, functions and inputs and outputs onto the console window. So it just basically improves the interaction back and forth between the user um, and the terminal window with like line out and line in kind of stuff. And then I'm gonna include one more module for this video uh, for this project that's just stream. And it's basically going to um, uh, string, sorry. And it's basically going to um, allow us to kind of use like some special characters like new line and stuff. Um, so those are what all we need to include. And then um, as always, we're gonna say using namespace uh, standard. If you have Microsoft Visual Studio, then when you boot up a new project, this is probably done for you already. Um, I just wanna fill in the full project quickly just so that um, everyone knows where everything comes from, okay? So then as always, we're gonna create the main function. And uh, this uh, question was asked in a previous video um, why is it int main? And that's because uh, the main function, which runs by default in your C++ file, the default return value that comes out of the main function is an integer value. So that's the reason it's always int main. Um, and in here, basically we're gonna start out by asking the user what their choice is, whether they want to register as a new user or whether they'd like to log in as an already registered user. And so to do that, we're just gonna create a integer that I'll call choice. And we're gonna print out instructions to the terminal that basically say, um, select a choice one, um, two, actually let's say select a choice and then put this backslash, uh, this new line character, which is backslash N. Programmers familiar with other languages are probably familiar with backslash N, that's pretty standard. And we'll say one register and then we'll do another backslash n. So this will be on a new line now and we'll say to log in and then we'll uh, ask them for their response on another new line. So then we'll say um, backslash your choice and then a colon and a space and that's where they'll actually enter the number that they want. Okay, and then on that uh, next line we'll say cn is going to equal choice so whatever they just entered is going to be um, choice it doesn't have to be down here that's one nice thing about c formatting this code is going to run the same whether you put this on its own line down below or you add it as a continuation of this line um, because i try to keep the text pretty big for uh, my users so that's a little bit easier to watch on youtube my viewers um, I'm gonna put it down on this next line, but you can play around with that if you want and put it all in one line. 
Okay, so now we're gonna actually start using that variable choice. So we're gonna say if choice equals one, which means the user selected that they want to register a new user, okay? So if choice is equal to one, I'm gonna put these curly brackets in, and this is gonna be where we say what to do if you said you wanted to register a new user. We're gonna define two variables, username and password, which are the two things that every uh, user is gonna have, so that shouldn't surprise you. And then we'll say see out, and we're just gonna prompt them, just like we did in selecting a choice. We'll say select a username, colon, and then I'm not gonna put any new lines in this because that's such a simple one. We'll just have them respond on the same line. And then uh, we'll say see in and put that in the username uh, variable. And then we'll do the same exact thing for see out. So I'm gonna copy all of this code. And the only difference now is we're gonna put it in uh, password instead of username. And we're gonna say select a password and then see in and see in is storing the value that is just entered by the user here into a variable um, and see out is just displaying whatever we say onto the console window so that's what see in and see out are um, i've talked about that in the past but just want every video to be able to stand on its own and then here's where the f stream comes in handy we're going to be uh, dealing with files for this project text files and so we need that uh, file stream. So we'll say OF stream file, okay? And so this is basically creating a new text file for whatever user we just registered. So we're gonna do file.open, and then we're gonna name the file. So what we're doing here is file.open, username, uh, and then we're just gonna add the .txt uh, a suffix to the file because um, basically we're just going to store these files in our project folder with whatever username we just entered. So if you entered Pete, there's going to be a pete.txt file in your project that's going to have inside it the username and password that was just entered. All right, so uh, that, and then make sure you get your semicolon, formatting is important. And then uh, we're going to say file username and and L, and then password. So this is where we're actually putting uh, information in the file. Uh, this is basically writing this information into the file, and then we just do file.close. That's how easy it is to create and store information in a text file with C++. Uh, the formatting's a little funky, but the actual code is pretty straightforward. You just create the file with file.open, and you name it with uh, whatever's in these parentheses, and then you just file, and then these arrows, and then that's storing this information inside that file, and then close it up and it's saved. And what we'll do after that is we'll return to main, so that way you can register as many users as you want um, until you decide that you want to uh, log in. Okay, so this is it for registering new users. Um, now what we want to do is we want to come outside of these curly brackets because uh, if you remember these curly brackets were for if choice is equal to one. Um, so we're going to take this line and now we're going to say what to do if choice is equal to two. So we come down here and instead of if now it's going to be an else if choice equals two just like that. Um, and now we need more curly brackets. And in here, we're gonna create a new variable that's going to say whether we've logged in successfully or not. So we're gonna create a Boolean um, that I'll call status, and we're gonna run this function that I'll call um, logging in, like that. Okay, and basically what I'm gonna say is if not status, okay? So this is basically saying if we haven't successfully logged in yet. Um, and you can see I'm getting the red squiggly in Microsoft Visual Studio because I haven't created the function yet. That's obviously what we're gonna be doing next, but I wanna kind of talk through how this logging in mechanism is gonna work in the outside world. So basically we're gonna keep trying to log in until we get a status of one, which is successful login. So to do that, we'll say if not status and then uh, new curlies. And uh, we're gonna say see out and we'll just tell them incorrect information try again just like that um, and then we will end the line and semicolon and then I'm gonna throw this system pause in there it just kind of is like a break to slow down your code because things move really fast in the computer world 
Um, and this is just good practice after like um, you print something on the screen. It gives the user kind of time to read and follow along before they uh, before they have to make another decision and continue interacting. But then we'll make this else because the only way, uh, the only two things you can have for a Boolean are true or false. So we're basically saying if not, and then this is the same thing as saying else if status like this. There's just no reason to type this in because the only thing you could have other than, well, it wouldn't be out here on its own. It would be, you know, in these parentheses. Um, but there's no reason to type it that way because the only thing other than not having status that you could have is having status. So um, we're gonna uh, kind of take this same format of system pause and returning a variable, except now instead we're gonna be returning one and we're just gonna say login successful, just like that, okay? Um, so this is all we need to do for processing the login, um, except we have to create the actual logging in function, obviously. Um, so let's go ahead and define this logging in. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come up near the top of my project just under using namespace standard, and I'm gonna create a new function that returns a Boolean and call it logging in, just like we said. And in here, I'm putting my curlies for the code that goes in this. And let's create our variables. So we're gonna have uh, actually four variables in this function. Um, we're going to have, let me make sure that's why I called it down here, just logging in, just like that. Yep, okay, groovy. Um, alrighty, so in this function, we're gonna have four strings. We're gonna have the username and password from the text file, and then we're also gonna have our entered username and password that I'll say user and pass. I'll make them shorter. Um, and so basically what we're doing is we're asking the uh, the user to put in their information and then we check through the text files in our project to see if we have a text file with that username and then we're going to check if we do have a text file under that username we check to see if the password matches what they've entered as the password and if it does then we're going to return a one and say successful um i should say because this is a boolean and i know we did return zero and return one down here um, that, that's because int main, main is supposed to have an integer. Um, for a Boolean, you say return true, false, but honestly in the world of programming, true is a one and false is a zero. So if I say true, false or one, zero, sometimes um, that's just a quick aside. Some, they mean the same thing. Um, so anyways, here's Wonderwall. Uh, so see out, uh, we're going to ask the user to enter the username and password because now we're building the function that is them trying to log in. All right, and then whatever they enter as the username, see in to this user uh, function. Um, actually, I guess we'll put, the, we'll put the ones they enter into username and password so that it matches this uh, previous one we did with select a username and password. We put those in username and password, so we'll do the same thing uh, for this. And then we'll say enter password in the same spot, and uh, then we'll see in that one into our password variable. And now what we're gonna do is if stream, um, and it's not actually if stream, it's input file stream. So to talk a little bit, cause I know I said that's why we need to include f stream down below um, when we did the uh, o f stream that's output file stream and then um, up here we're doing input file stream so that's why if stream and down below it was uh, of stream okay so a little bit of background info for you and then we're going to do read and then username plus dot txt so this is where it comes in handy the format that we've done this is we've stored every username as username.txt. We know that's the format of username and password files because we just wrote it that way. So now we can take the entered username and basically say, okay, we've got two lines in there. We know because we defined it. And the first one is the username. Um, and then we're gonna do a second get line that is read and then password, right? Because that's the order that we put them in there. And so then we can say if the user is equal to username and then this uh the way you write and in c plus plus i'm not sure we've covered this before is and and the way you say equals for uh conditions is equals equals 
it's C++, so why wouldn't everything be doubled? Um, but basically, we want to check that the username matches and the password matches. Um, and I guess, frankly, this might seem like overkill because the only way you'd get to a username file is if username matched, but this is better practice. Make sure all the information lines up. Um, and then what we'll say is if everything does line up, then we'll return true, which means you've successfully logged in. Uh, and this is not a capital T. This is not Python, Pete. Okay, and so then uh, what we'll say uh, outside of those curlies is else, and then um, we'll put in here what we want to do if it's not true. And so else will be return false, like that. Okay, and so this is it. This is all the code we need. Look at that. That was... Well, oh, that was about 66 lines around there with some spaces, but it was only 15 minutes to build that project. And now let's take a look at um, what we built. So let's go ahead and build that and debug it. And I'm gonna make this text big for you guys because I know uh, a lot of my projects, they're too small. <laughs> let's register some users. So let's start by making a um, Peter. It's a good name and select a password. We'll say Batman. And then let's register another user. Uh, and we'll call this one Jack. And Jack's password is gonna be loser. That's my older brother, so he can take it. All right, and now let's go ahead and log in. And let's try to log in as Peter, um, but let's try a wrong password. Let's say Spider-Man. Okay, and it tells us incorrect information. Try again, press any key to continue. So we hit one and close the window. Alrighty, now if we run that again, let's try this time logging in correctly. All right, so select a choice, register, log in. Let's log in, enter username Pete, enter username. Oh, I guess it's uh, not Pete, is it? <laughs> it was Peter. Gotta be better than that. Gotta get up pretty early in the morning. All right, let's try logging in again. Enter username Peter, and password was Batman, all lowercase like that. Login successful. So this is where you would use that is logged in function in your greater overall project to limit functionality. So until you'd successfully logged in in your project, you would limit their functionality. You wouldn't let them navigate to other pages. If it was something where they had to have uh, like been successfully registered and logged in to do anything in your project. Okay, so that's a pretty easy, pretty basic C++ project that has some real world application to it. And as we get more and more into C++, I do hope we branch out, we build more elaborate projects, but I always try to make sure that on the channel, every stepping stone to get to whatever project we're building is available to you. So there's no steps that you feel like you couldn't catch up with. So if you have any questions about what you saw in this video or something specific you'd like to see in a future video, be sure to let me know about in the comments below. If you love the content on the channel, you want to become a super supporter, feel free to check out my Patreon link in the description of this video. Um, don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for tons more great content. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.